uh, but unfortunately I need more space and in fact it's also kind of cold as you can see Christmas is real Okay, as we all know, when we have n factorial, this represents a number of ways for us to arrange n different objects. And this is also called the permutation. This right here is called the combination, and you can say this as n choose k. And this is the number of ways to choose k objects out of a total of n objects. This right here is extremely useful when you want to compute the probability of winning a lottery jackpot. But anyway, you see the formulas right here. And now, Let's talk about subfactorial of n, namely the derangement of n. Last time I did a video on the recursive formula, today let's talk about an explicit formula for the subfactorial of n. To do so, we will have to begin with a story. That's how you do combinatorial proofs sometimes. So here's the deal. You know Christmas is coming. You are going to meet up with two other friends. You are going to bring gift A and you are going to bring the second person is going to bring gift B and then the third person is going to bring gift C. And you guys will be doing a gift exchange. Well, if you don't mind of getting your gift back, then there will be a total of three factorial ways for you to arrange the gifts A, B, C. If you don't mind getting your own gift back, then that's three factorial ways. But of course, where's the fun if you just get your own gift back, right? Well, when you have subfactorial for the der derangement. This will compute the number of ways for you guys to do gift exchange so that nobody gets back his or her own gift back, right? And now to compute that, we are going to look at this diagram. This is how we are going to do it. So let's write it down. Subfactorial of 3. Well, as we said it, there will be a total of 3 factorial ways if you don't care about the order of the ABC. So we are going to begin with 3 factorial. But since you care, now this is how you are going to care. First of all, you have to make sure that the first person, which is you, doesn't get the gift back right here, right? So first person doesn't get back A. And you're going to subtract this right here, right? Let me just subtract this right here. Similarly, you also have to make sure the second person doesn't get back um, his gift, namely B. So you're going to take away this as well, right? And then the third situation right here is that you have to make sure that the third person doesn't get back his or her own gift. So the idea is that you're going to subtract this portion and this portion and also this portion. Let me just do like, I don't know, like this maybe. So now the way to think about this is the following. You have this, this and that. One of the person gets back his gift with that person. We have a total of three people. We can just choose one to be the unlucky one, right? So we will put down three, choose one. And the idea here is that maybe you can say, okay, the third person, he gets back his own gift. And after you have that, you're talking about this situation. The third person gets back his uh, or her own gift right here. You still have to arrange the other two. So the idea is that maybe you have the C right here you still have to arrange the rest of these two people. And what you have to do is just arrangement, you have to do two factorial, but let me write it down as three minus one factorial. And the way to think about it is that you chose one person and he gets his own gift back. You have to arrange the rest of the people's gift. So that's pretty much the idea. So you see, you could have chosen this person. You could also have chosen this person. You could have also chosen that person. But it doesn't matter which, people, which person you choose, you have to arrange the rest of the gifts. So that's what this is for. So that will cover uh, the situation right here. And we have to subtract that, right? That's, that's nice. However though, when you do this subtraction, notice that when I take away this portion from the first circle, and then I take away this portion, this intersection here, I took away it twice. So I actually have to put it back because I double counted. I subtracted too many times. I have to put it back. So I have to put back this intersection here. I'll put this down in red. And then likewise, I also have to put down this intersection. I also have to put down this intersection. And let's focus on this intersection here. What does this represent? This represents the first person and also the second person. They both get their gifts back. 
So this is the situation that two people, they got their gift back. Likewise, this represents the second and the third, they got their gifts back. And then this right here represents the first and then the third, they got their gift back. Two out of the three people, they got their gift back. So what we can do is, we are going to put back the situation that three choose two, because it's two out of the three people, they got their gift back. So two choose three, it can be A and C, then just fix them. And you have to arrange the rest of the person's gift. I know it's one factorial, but I will actually write it down as three minus two factorial, right? So once again, this right here is like saying, you pick two people out of however many, they got their gift back, and then arrange the rest of the gifts, right? So maybe these two and arrange that person's gift. However, when you put this back, unfortunately, look at the red part. I went like this, one time, this time, and then this time. I put back too many times for the intersection. And this right here, it's called the principle of inclusive and exclusive. So you have to do this thing at minus, subtracting, minus, subtracting. You have to put back and then subtract and all that stuff. So you can remove on that. And the last situation we have here is that the middle part. The middle part represents everybody, they all get their gift back. And we have to put, we have to subtract that because I put back too many times. And then subtract that, meaning that I pretty much just select all three people. That's three, choose three. They all got their gift back. And then do we have any left over? No. And technically, I'll just put down as three minus three factorial for the zero factorial. So this is pretty much the idea. And now let's do some simplification right here. And to do so, I will just make some note right here for you guys. Because the reason I put this down right here is you see, you have the one, two, and the three right here, and the rest are the same. So let's focus on this four. Three choose k times three minus k factorial. Well, well, three choose k, we can use this formula. Three is the n, so we have three factorial over k is just k, and we have k factorial here. And then here we have three minus k factorial. And you see that we are multiplying by three minus k factorial here. And of course, you can see that this and that cancel. So this is very nice. In another word, you will end up with three factorial over k factorial. And of course, in this situation, the k is one. The, in this situation, the k is two. And in this situation, the k is three. So let's go ahead and put these things down. First, I will write down 3 factorial. This right here, once again, k is 1, so we minus 3 factorial over 1 factorial. And then we add 3 factorial over 2 factorial. And then we subtract 3 factorial over 3 factorial. And the reason I put this down is because you see that everybody has 3 factorial. So of course we can factor that out. So when we do that, we get 3 factorial times 1 minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial and then minus 1 over 3 factorial. So this is very nice. And yes, this is how you can compute subfactorial of 3. And notice, this right here, it's an explicit formula. It does not base on the previous term, unlike the recursive formula that we did last time. And in fact, I want to generalize this for any n. So let's make another observation right here. Suppose you have another friend right here. Okay, maybe he show up there. So now you have to do the computation over again. Oh my God, but that's, that's okay. Stuff factorial four, yes, right here. All you have to do is, you see, when you have three, of course this is three. So when you have four right here, you have four factorial, and you open the parentheses, and you are going to start with one, and then minus one over one factorial, plus one over two factorial, and so on. You're going to stop at when this number match with that, right? And you have to make sure the set alternates. So here we go. One minus one over one factorial, plus one over two factorial, minus 1 over 3 factorial, but then you remember, you have to add 1 over 4 factorial, and then you stop when these two match. And it's really hard, 
to draw a Venn diagram with four circles, so it's nearly impossible. If you know how to do it, let me know. But you know, just follow this right here. And then this is just like a small extension. This is how you can compute four factorial. And maybe you guys can help me out with the answer. Okay, now let's generalize this when we have subfactorial of n. Of course, we'll begin by having n factorial, and then we multiply by 1, and then minus 1 over 1 factorial, and then plus 1 over 2 factorial, and then minus 1 over 3 factorial, and then plus 1 over 4 factorial, and so on, so on, so on. Notice though, sometimes in the end you have the minus, sometimes you have the plus. How do we know? Well, take a look right here. n is 3 right here, you have minus. When n is 4, which is even, you have plus. So it depends on even or odd, right? 3 is minus, 4 is plus. What you have to do right here is you can just write down minus 1 to the nth power, and then you multiply. Um, let me erase that. Just write it right here. That's for, for the simple space. You have the negative 1 to the nth power, and then times 1 over n factorial, and that's it. Uh, but unfortunately, I need more space. And in fact, it's also kind of cold. As you can see, Christmas is real as long as you make a wish, and if you're a good person, I wish your wish comes true as well. Anyway, we will continue, because right here, we can put that into a summation form. So let's write this down. This right here is equal to n factorial. And for that part, let me write it down like this. I will have the summation, and because we're having n right here already, so I will choose another index. And let me just use i. Don't get too excited. This is not the imaginary number. This is just the index, i. OK, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to n right here. What's the beginning right here, though? If you want, you can write it down as 0 factorial. It's very nice. So I will have i goes from 0 up to n. And then, as you can see on the top, it's pretty much 1, minus 1, and so on, so on, so on. So you can just put this down right here. Negative 1 raised to the not unknown. You have to put on i, because you are writing it down in the summation form. Negative 1 to the i's power, and then divided by the bottom is i factorial. Okay. Once again, this is not the complex number i, and then you do the factorial. No, don't, it's not like that. Anyway, this right here is pretty much it. Now, I do want to make a really cool note for you guys right here, though. So, notice, this is my final remark. If n is large enough, so let me just say uh, this right here, for big enough, n value, the subfactorial of n, in fact, is approximately equal to n factorial times this. If n is big enough, this right here is actually about equal to e raised to the negative 1 power. How do we know? Well, well, we have to use power series. Ah, this is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, x to the nth power over n factorial. And, and I can just put negative 1 for x, and you'll notice that e to the negative 1 is equal to the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the nth power all over n factorial, like this. Of course, to get e to the negative 1, you have, will have to go from 0 to infinity. But as I said, if n is big enough, this right here is approximately e to the negative 1 because you see this is pretty much the same as that if n is you know, big enough. So if you would like, you can also write this down like the following. You can say that subfactorial of n is approximately equal to n factorial divided by the special number e. right? And of course, you can also talk about some fluid function, and you can come up with another formula or so, but I think this is good enough. Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this. If you do, please give me a like and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. You will find a lot more interesting math content on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, that's it.